Well, hello, everyone. I'm James Dobson, and you're listening to Family Talk, a listener-supported ministry. In fact, thank you so much for being part of that support for James Dobson Family Institute. Well, welcome to Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh, and if you were with us yesterday, you heard quite a powerful message from our guest, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Rabbi Kahn joins us again today and will be with us again tomorrow, along with our co-host, Dr. Tim Clinton, to discuss his latest book. It's called The Josiah Manifesto, The Ancient Mystery and Guide for the End Times. Now, of course, Jonathan Kahn has been a really dear friend of Dr. Dobson and Family Talk for many, many years. He's the president of Hope of the World Ministries, and he also serves as the senior pastor and messianic rabbi of the Jerusalem Center Beth Israel in New Jersey. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn is a New York Times bestselling author and a renowned international speaker, and Rabbi Kahn is married to his lovely wife, Renata, and they have three sons. Let's join Rabbi Jonathan Kahn and our co-host, Dr. Tim Clinton, right here, right now, on Family Talk. Jonathan, welcome back. What a day yesterday as we get started in this new uh, book of yours, The Josiah Manifesto, The Ancient Mystery and Guide for the End Times. Jonathan, I'm stunned at the correlations that God has revealed, if you will, through your work, your research here. And as we get started, let me ask a question to all of us. Is it possible that there exists an answer, a God, a blueprint that reveals what you need to know to survive, to stand, and to prevail? in view of what's coming in the days ahead. And it's been revealed to us in the appearing of a sign from an ancient mystery playing out in modern times before our eyes. The Josiah Manifesto opens up the stunning mysteries that lie behind the events unfolding right now before our own eyes. These keys unlock the answer, the God, and the manifesto so we all can stand and prevail in this hour and in light of what is yet to come. They're even now affecting our own everyday lives. Jonathan, let me hand this back to you as we get started here on day two, talking about the Josiah Manifesto. Again, for those who were unable to listen yesterday, give us a quick recap of what the manifesto reveals. Yeah, we'd say, what if there was a revelation that God is giving us now? What if God was giving us a message in the events of our times that are really about that, about what we need to do? You know, so many believers are looking and saying, what do we do? What's going on? Well, there's always an answer. And what if God is really showing us? And what if behind the events that we have all witnessed, we all just went through this plague, we've gone through shakings. What if there was actually a a, a meaning in it? What if there was a mystery behind it? What if there was a, a mystery so precise from God, from the Bible, that it actually ordains the exact times when these happened, you know, and where it's going. And if they, these, all these things converge together to open up a key about what we need to know for what's coming. And, you know, one of the things, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the last program is that this is the only book where almost every other mystery that began with my other books are kind of coming home to come together for an answer. I felt very strongly I had to write this now for God's people. I mean, beyond for people who are also not saved, but the answer part for God's people. We started out talking also about your trip to Cuba yes. and how really on the year of Jubilee, we saw a massive transformation. It was shocking. Yeah. And Tim, and I'm not, you know, listen, I don't claim that I know all these things when I, you know, when I do something, I don't necessarily know why, but, but I was led to very clearly give to Fidel Castro, for those who didn't hear it, a prophetic object and a prophetic message. And it ended up, this mystery of God ended up giving the exact year that his reign would end that began in 1959 and not only the the year but the exact day and not just the day but the exact hour and that mystery linked to to leviticus 25 actually is also the mystery that's been unfolding in america and has changed all of our lives and jonathan the connection on the issue of abortion and then the connection between abortion and the COVID pandemic and how it even entered the country, the relationship there and more. As we go on through the Josiah Manifesto, you moved to a place where you began talking about the incident around January 6th, President Trump and a king named Jehu. Yes. Take us there. Tim, this began in the book that I wrote called The Paradigm, but what happened now happened after I wrote the book. Now, first for those to get an idea, 
I've said that there are things that are replaying, and we, the answer to everything is in the Bible. And God gives templates, and God gives patterns. And the thing is that in, in the days when Israel was falling away from God, there was a pattern, there was a template that took place that actually modern American leaders, without knowing it, are following that template. And I'm, this is not saying that the Bible is prophesying these people. It's saying that there are templates of God. And so I'll, I will just give a little kind of setup here, and that is that, and this is not political, but Donald Trump. Well, the mystery of Donald Trump in the paradigm is that he's following this template of this, without knowing it, this man called Jehu. Jehu was wild, unpredictable. Well, Donald Trump is unpredictable. And wild. A, a, man, a man of controversy. You <laughs> a man, it. A man yes. of controversy. Absolutely. You know what, Tim? You can't say that, you know, was Jehu a man of God? We can't say it, but we can say that he was used of God. And so the thing is that, yeah, he's a man of controversy and he was fighting with every, this Jay who was fighting with everybody like Trump. He started this race to the throne that was a wild race. The Bible says he, it's, it must be Jay who driving because he drives like a madman. It's a crazy race. <laughs> Same with the race with Donald Trump. Jay who makes an alliance with the religious conservatives of his land. And he actually make, has a partnership with a pious man of God and he rides to the Capitol with this man, exactly what Donald Trump does. And then when then when when Jehu gets to the throne, he comes face to face in a showdown with the nation's former first lady. And the former first lady in the Bible is, of course, Jezebel. And so but in, in the case of America, it was Hillary Clinton. Now, I'm not saying a lot except to say that interesting on the issue of abortion. Jezebel was for the worship of Baal, which is the lifting up and sacrificing of children. Well, you know, Hillary Clinton was the champion of abortion by Planned Parenthood of the century. So you have the same things in mind. You know, so everybody was saying that Hillary Clinton was going to win, but the paradigm said that, no, when they come face to face, Jehu will prevail and the, the former first lady will not. So that's exactly what happened. Then Jehu goes to the capital city. And you know what his agenda is, Tim? His agenda is to drain the swamp. Trump comes in the same way. And again, we're not saying Trump is, we're not, this is not about Trump. It's about, it's about the paradigm of God. So he comes there and he sees a gigantic temple of Baal. So in the capital city is this temple of Baal where they kill children. And Jehu tears it down. And the principle is that when Jehu rises, the temple of Baal falls to the earth. Now here's like a stunning thing. It turns out that there happened to be a temple of Baal that had still stood from ancient times in the world in Syria. And the thing is, when Donald Trump began his rise in the summer of 2015, two months later, the 2,000-year-old temple of Baal falls to the earth. The principle, when Jehu rises, the temple of Baal falls. So that's the beginning of his reign. But at the end of Donald Trump's term, something else happened. Now, this, Tim, was not in the paradigm because it came true after, but the template is in the paradigm, and then it happened afterwards. And that is this, I will just say this. There is a, and I put it, of course, in the manifesto, and that is that there is a time in the Bible when Jehu calls people from all over the nation to gather in the capital city. Well, Trump does that as well. And by the way, anything I'm saying here, it's not condoning anything that happened. We're against anything that is of violence and all, but there is a, I'm talking about the template here and what it means. And so he calls together, Jehu calls the people to the capital city. So does Trump. Then the people of Jehu surround a great capital building. Okay. So now the people of Trump surround the, the actual capital building. And then according to the template in the Bible, the people of Jehu then lay siege or enter or storm the great capital building while there is there are proceedings going on inside the Capitol building. And so what happens in January 6th? Same exact thing. They go inside, they storm it. They and and by the way, I'm gonna say this too, and I don't know if I mentioned this or not. The week that began January 6th, you know what? Something interesting happened. The new Congress was sworn in, it was Democrat-led Congress, and the prayer that was lifted up, as they always lift up a prayer, was prayed in the name of Brahma. First time, it was inaugurated in the name of a false god, a pagan god. So just, just a note that actually links to the mystery. Now, when the Capitol Police announced that they had arrested on site the people on, in Washington on that first week when it happened, they made big headlines. They said, we have arrested 80 people. If you go to the Book of Kings and you go to Jehu, 
the Hebrew says the number of those who stormed the Capitol building was 80 men. Jonathan, in the midst of it, the connecting points are eerie, if you will, because as you begin to see the issue of abortion and the appointment of the president, President Trump, and you're talking about Jehu and the bringing down of Baal, bring those pieces together for us because this is fascinating. Yeah, totally. The whole war, the image of the Temple of Baal and Jehu, which actually frames Donald Trump's, the beginning of his rise and the end of his term, the beginning and end, it is about something exactly what you said. The Temple of Baal represented the killing of children. It was the vessel in which children were killed. And so in America, that is, you know, what is the vessel that legalized this across the land? It was Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade is a temple of Baal. Now, let's say we didn't know anything. We came to this planet. We knew this paradigm, but we didn't know what was going to happen. Well, you look and we've got a Jehu, a man who's following without realizing it, who pulled down the temple of Baal. Then you have this temple of Baal of Roe versus Wade. What it's saying is that Donald Trump, again, you know, we don't know his motives, but the fact is he is going to be instrumental in pulling down abortion or Roe versus Wade, and that's exactly what happened. And you know, interesting, uh, Tim, because Jehu originally was serving under Ahab and Jezebel, so he was for uh, the Temple of Baal, but then he changed. Well, well, Donald Trump was originally for abortion, but he changed. It's not about a person, it's about God. So he would be used, and as exactly as you said, he would, by nominating the three Supreme Court justices, and the last one was the most crucial, happened just in the last window of time, at the like at the end of his time to do it, he nominated the three ones. Well, that would be instrumental. If he didn't do that, there's no way that Roe versus Wade would have been overturned. He needed every single vote. And interesting thing is, you know, there was talking about this battle between Jehu and the Temple of Baal. Interesting thing, because when Trump was rising and running for the candidacy, it was like one month before the election, and, and he and Hillary Clinton both linked to New York, a strange object appears in New York. And the object that appears in New York is actually from or reproduced from the Temple of Baal that fell when Donald Trump began to rise. They actually erected it in New York City. I was there. I witnessed it. We filmed it because they had a ceremony. It was on a city hall. They had the leaders of New York giving praise in this ser- playing music of Baal. And they had, a, they had a sign that said Temple of Baal. And they uncovered it and they applauded it. And this is a sign of a war going on. This is a war of, again, Jehu, Temple of Baal, abortion. And this is a sign that actually abortion is going to be overturned or Roe versus Wade. And then here's the other thing, Tim. When Trump nominated the second person, which was Kavanaugh, if you remember, the, it was a fury on Capitol Hill, you know, it was because the issue of abortion, that was the reason. And while that was happening, while all hell was breaking loose on Capitol building, Outside the Capitol building, an object appears. It's the Arch of Baal from the Temple of Baal, the same arch. They erected it, and I'm not saying they knew what they were doing, but it appears right in front of the Capitol building, this war, which is ultimately over abortion. And ultimately, this is going to, as in the pulling down of the Temple of Baal, this is ultimately going to pull down Roe versus Wade. So, Jonathan, I'll make sure I've got the connecting points here. What you're saying is abortion really was America's form of bail worship. Yeah. This goes back to killing our children. Tim, they literally, I spoke about this more in The Return of the Gods, but they literally, they were worshiping gods where they had to lift up their children on the altar. One of the things is that when a nation that has known God turns away from God, it ends up, like what happened to Israel? They ended up offering their children. So look what happened. As America started driving God out in the 60s, what happened at the end of that decade is we started also offering up our own children just like Israel did in the form of abortion. You know, Israel offered up, you know, thousands of children in the Valley of Hinnom. We have offered up over 60 million children, and that has a price. So Jonathan, then the Jubilee nullifies undoes what was done. That's right. That's exactly right. This all began in the, what we're talking about. We have the plague. Yeah, we have, you know, which that's one form of inverting what happened. 50 years later, we have death to death. You take life, life is taken. But the other side 
is redemption. Because at the same time, this what we've been living through, Tim, from this plague and all the connections with abortion, there's also a redemption beginning at the same time. Because the Jubilee, that's the other side, is exactly, it's gonna, re if it reverses what was done, it's gonna reverse what was done with abortion or with Roe versus Wade. And that's exactly what we're gonna see, a, a new mystery al along the same pattern of the Jubilee, but it's gonna be towards redemption. You're listening to Family Talk, a division of the James Dobson Family Institute. I'm Dr. Tim Clinton, co-host. Our special guest today, seven-time New York Times bestselling author, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, all about his new book. I think it's his most explosive book yet, The Josiah Manifesto, The Ancient Mystery and Guide for the End Times. It's a real work, Jonathan, to help us navigate these turbulent, crazy, insane waters that we find ourselves in with hope. Doesn't mean, Jonathan, that the road before us isn't going to be stormy or bumpy or that we don't have to fight. As a matter of fact, there's a clarion call here um, as we continue through this to do that very thing. But again, it's filled with hope because while these are unprecedented times, Jonathan, God's at work, isn't he? Yeah, listen, God's on the throne. You know, even when I wrote The Harbinger, you know, I was surprised that many believers were saying, you know, this gave me hope because this is showing me God is actually in, the God of the Bible is actually in control just as he was in the Bible. And that's exactly so. Let's step back then and look at this connecting point, this jubilee piece, if you will, and go back to Norma McCorvey, Henry Wade, what happened. It was filed, I don't think a lot of people know this, in 1970. Yes. And that's significant as we fast forward, if you will, to the Dobbs versus Jackson decision that went down and how Roe was eventually overturned. Can you begin to connect all the points for us? Yes, it's that mystery. Now it's the other side of the Jubilee, which is redemption. Well, on one hand, yeah, people don't realize it. As you said, you know, Roe versus Wade was actually began in 1970. That was, you know, that was as Norma Corby, a troubled uh, person who wanted an abortion because she wanted actually to drink and have drugs and at the time. So she went to an attorney in Texas. And the thing is that when she went it was 1970 and actually it was late January. Interesting, because when you go forward 50 years, what happens in late January 2020? The plague comes, you know. And then you know when Roe vs. Wade became a case? It became a case in March of 1970. So what happens when you go to March 2020? That's when the full weight of all this of COVID comes on America. But now there's a redemption side because, you know, God takes, he'll use something and he'll turn it around for good. So here was a case that was on the state levels appealed by the state, and then it went to the Supreme Court. Well, what happens is, go one jubilee year, 1970, Roe versus Wade was sent to the Supreme Court. Well, 50 years later, that takes you to 2020, another case is sent to the Supreme Court, actually both in the summer, sent to the Supreme Court, and that is Dobbs versus Jackson, and that is going to overturn Roe versus Wade. Now, Roe versus Wade was received, taken up by the Supreme Court in May 1971. Well, what happens when you apply the mystery? Go forward 50 years, it takes you to May 2021. May 2021, Dobbs versus Jackson is taken up by the Supreme Court to match Roe versus Wade. Then Roe versus Wade was heard before it received its hearing in front of the Supreme Court in December of 1971. Well, apply the mystery of the Jubilee. It takes you to December of 2021. Anything happen? Dobbs versus Jackson received its hearing in the Jubilee of Roe versus Wade. In fact, Tim, remember before the, the verdict uh, came out, it was leaked. Remember with Dobbs versus Jackson, yes. it was a big leak. Yes. Everyone, everyone went crazy, you know, just before it came out. If you go back 50 years, Roe versus Wade was leaked. I, I didn't, I didn't know out. that. I, I, I was yeah. stunned by yeah. that. Again, it's mind boggling and it's redemption. I want to go back to a piece that you had written in here under the mystery of Savon 23. Yes. In it, you go back to the story of Esther and it recounts how the Jews of Persia were saved from annihilation. I think it was Haman planned to exterminate the Jews. And then Esther steps in, along with Mordecai, exposes his plan. But there was an ordinance of nullification that was given. And I thought this was really fascinating. And it was the 23rd day of the Hebrew month of Sivan. 
Yes. And Tim, I got to say something. It is a joy to do a, an interview with someone who has totally read every part. I am uh -huh. so blessed. Yes. So here, there's actually two mysteries here. One is when Haman makes this decree that's going to bring death and destruction, it is linked to the Hebrew date Adar 13, which is the 13th day of the 12th month on the Bible's calendar. 13th day of the 12th month, decree of death and destruction. Well, the thing is, Roe versus Wade received its hearing in the Supreme Court on December 13th, the 13th day of the 12th month, a decree of death and destruction. Yes. But then, according to the mystery, uh, when you go further, as you said, there's another decree that's issued to nullify the first decree. So it's a decree like the first decree. It's going to accept it's going to nullify the death and destruction. And that is Mordecai's decree. So the first thing is you see that, you know, as, as there was that decree or that case of Roe versus Wade, Dobbs versus Jackson goes through the same exact steps as Roe versus Wade, just like Mordecai. When you read in Esther, Mordecai's decree goes through the exact steps that Haman's decree went through. So Dobbs goes through the same as Roe versus Wade, step by step, actually in the exact time. Okay. But finally, when the Bible gives a date, when the, when the decree of nullification goes forth, and that the date is, it says, as you said, Sivan 23, it, it's done, it goes forth to do its thing. Well, Sivan 23, okay, is a Hebrew date. Now, Dobbs versus Jackson went forth to the Supreme Court 50 years after Roe versus Wade did, same time of year, same thing, but it went forth on June 15, 2020, the Jubilee of, ab of Abortion on Demand. It went there, and so June 15, but on the Bible Hebrew calendar, it went forth on the day of Sivan 23, the day of the decree that is going to nullify the evil decree. That's when it went forth. In fact, Tim, on that day, Sivan 23, Jewish people all over the world are in prayer, praying for God to nullify all evil decrees. And on the, as they're praying for it, the very decree is going forth to nullify Roe versus Wade. It's just, not, you, you can't make this up. No. You can't. Hey, Jonathan, we're fighting time for our second day of the broadcast here, but I did want you just to tease out a little bit about the children of the Nile and then begin to connect a little bit more here that was fascinating as you look at the transition along with President Trump, who now is faced with the loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and the appointment, but there's some amazing pieces here that, again, are shocking to me. Yeah, there's so many. I can only tease. I got, I'm sure we're going to get into it on the next program. But yeah, there's the mystery of the child of the Nile. That's, a, that's somebody who's actually appointed, born for that moment. There's also the mystery of the Hebrew holy days on which all these things are going to happen. It's almost like when you get to the point, it's going to be like all these mysteries are coming together to one moment to do what basically God is going to do. So I, I don't know if we have time to reveal the child of the Nile or we'll tease that for the next program. Let's do that on the next broadcast. Okay. Yes, Jonathan, what a delight it's been to have you. The Josiah Manifesto, Jonathan's new uh, instant bestseller, The Ancient Mystery and Guide for the End Times. Where can people get copies of this new book? Yeah, literally, the Josiah Manifesto just released right now, this week. So it's literally everywhere. You go to Amazon, go online, anywhere where you get books, it's going to be there. Even store, Walmart, Barnes & Noble, it's going to be everywhere. I always pray that people get it, not only for themselves, but also for those in their lives who need to know it. Well, what a delightful conversation. What a hopeful conversation, really, Jonathan, as we think about how God is at work in the midst of his people. It's not about the darkness. It's about the light. Hey, on behalf of Dr. Dobbs and his wife, Shirley, uh, Rabbi Khan, what a delight to have you. We continue to pray for you, your wife, your children, your family, your ministry, that God would strengthen you and give you more boldness and courage in this day and hour. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tim. Hopeful conversation indeed. By the way, that book title again is The Josiah Manifesto by our guest here on Family Talk, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Rabbi Kahn has been on the program over the past couple of days discussing his new book and the mysteries of an ancient calendar. He's done so with our co-host, Dr. Tim Clinton. Be sure to join us again tomorrow to hear who the modern day child of the Nile is and why they have been so important in changing history. You will not want to miss it.
Now, as parents and caregivers, we hope to bring our children up within a positive family environment and with good physical, spiritual, and emotional health. But this can be even more challenging if your son or daughter is strong-willed and defiant. Here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, we want to walk alongside you during these important developmental years as a parent. And to help you in these efforts, we encourage you to sign up for our brand new 10-day email series based on Dr. Dobson's best-selling book, The New Strong-Willed Child. This series is designed to encourage and equip you to wisely lead your kids through even the toughest of trials. Now to sign up, it's free. Just visit drjamesdobson.org forward slash strong-willed child. That's drjamesdobson.org forward slash the word strong, the word willed, and the word child. Thanks so much for listening to Family Talk, the voice you trust for the family you love. I'm Roger Marsh, inviting you to join us again right here again tomorrow. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.